The information contained in this video is not financial advice, and a failure to correctly utilize the processes outlined and networks used can result in the permanent loss of your crypto. Don't be an idiot. Follow the steps as given. Alright, so to get started, you're going to have to navigate to launchpad.ethereum.org and this will take you to the uh, ETH2 launchpad for staking. Go ahead and click become a validator. Though you're not going to be running a validator, you still have to go through this process. You're going to have to agree to 10 steps here. Um, you can read them or you can click continue and I accept over and over and over again. There's a lot to go through here. Um, if you're becoming a validator, you know, you definitely want to read a lot of this. Uh, it tells you how to not lose your Ethereum uh, if you're staking what you can and can't do. I do want to make a significant note that you cannot run your own validator with the same key that you are using with the pool. This will cause you to basically lose that validator. Don't do it. Go ahead and click continue on the list, and you have to choose an Ethereum 1 client. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you choose. And for this one, we're not going to choose any of them because we're going to use a tool. So just go ahead and click continue. And now we're going to go to yu.gg. That's W-A-G-Y-U dot G-G. And the ETH Staker devs have created a custom tool for Linux, Windows, and Mac that will generate your keys for you in a very pleasant uh, GUI interface. Go ahead and click on it and then Windows will tell you it has a virus. Um, so you go and try to play allow the device and Windows screws you over. So you got to click on protection history and then click on the top threat that's been blocked. You can see that's the key gen. Click on actions and click on allow. It's that easy to allow the file. It is not a virus. It just accesses databases and then Windows auto flags it. Um, you can re-download it again and then run it. And of course it works. And you can see this is a beautiful program. Uh, we're going to be doing this on mainnet because I am creating a mainnet validator. Make sure you change your network. Uh, and it'll want you to create a secret recovery phrase or you can use an existing account. Um, so go ahead and create your recovery phrase. Just click on create and it's going to give you the 24 words. And you can copy that to a clipboard, stick it in your Google Drive, but you're going to have to duplicate it here again. Uh, enter it and then select how many keys you want to generate. In this case, I'm going to generate one. I'm going to type in my password. Do not forget this password. Just like the recovery phrase, you should be writing this down somewhere else. And it's going to make you retype it because you need to have this correct. You will require this to stake your validator. So finish it up. Click create. Uh, it'll take a moment to generate. Mine's pretty fast. You know, don't want to brag. Um, and once it's created those keys, you can read the disclaimer statements about what those key store files are. Click close. And then we're just going to skip this entire page because we already did it with our cool tool, the wayu.gg. Go ahead and agree to it, click continue, and now it's gonna ask you to upload your deposit data. So you're gonna have to go to the directory that you had uh, created those key store files into, go ahead and hunt those down, and then once you've got that validator key uh, folder open, you're just gonna wanna take your deposit data file and click and then drag and place it into the page. So just drop it there and then click continue. Super easy. And now comes the big moment. This is where you're going to have to stake all of that Ethereum to the staking process. Um, normally we're going to use MetaMask. I'm very familiar with it. But first I want to talk about uh, how to connect a hardware wallet to MetaMask to stake through that. Because let's be honest, most of you are going to be using a hardware wallet to store hundred plus thousand dollars worth of ethereum go ahead and log into metamask if you don't have a metamask account you'll have to go to metamask.io to create one uh, you can check out my other videos if you're interested in that process the getting started videos click the button at the top right and click connect hardware wallet this is going to bring you a page to either select a ledger or a trezor it does not uh, support things like descent or anything like that and you'll click continue 
Now, assuming that you have a hardware wallet installed, it will show up here and allow you to pair. Uh, so just follow the instructions from this point to pair that device. Uh, in this case, the funds are already on MetaMask. So I'm gonna click on MetaMask and it's gonna ask me to connect it. I've already logged in, so I can just click next. Uh, and then I will click connect, which is an approval. It's gonna take a brief moment. It's gonna show me my network and current balance. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click continue and we're getting down to the wire here. This is where it gets serious. So now I will select how many validators. I am staking four. I will agree to a lot of serious statements. You can check the deposit contract address if you want to do that for safety reasons. I do recommend it. And you are going to have to agree that you are not going to attempt to double deposit on this particular key. That's a bad idea because you will basically have that 32 ETH locked, but you won't be earning rewards on it. Once you click confirm, it'll take you to the transaction screen, click confirm request, and then you will get a MetaMask approval window to confirm staking a full 32 Ethereum. When you're sure, click confirm. And then it's gonna take a couple really excruciating moments. It's just gonna sit here and blink at you for a bit and you can just contemplate your life and think about how much money you committed to this. And it's done. Our transaction is successful. If you click continue, it'll take you to a confirmation screen, uh, let you know how much you've staked, what the current APR level is, and how many validators you own. All right, so now we're gonna get started on ethpool.org. And this is where you're going to connect your validator to the solo staking pool. So you just go to ethpool.org and we can put it on dark mode, just like any of the other BitFly sites. That's way better in my opinion. I love their dark mode look. As you can see, there's a nice little ETH2 icon at the top along with all the mining pools. And we can just click on the top and click uh, start mining and it'll take us to a setup or sign up registration page. So I'm just going to sign up with uh, my email here and then create a password and then create another password. Uh, agree to those terms and conditions and register. You know, everyone's been through this rigmarole 30,000 times. Uh, it's going to ask me to save my password and you know, I don't really care about that. And then of course we have to check our email and verify uh, the address, uh, you know, just to confirm our registration. Once you're confirmed, just go ahead and sign in once again, enter your login info, click login, and you'll be on the dashboard. I don't have anything set up here because I have no validators registered. Um, they've proposed no blocks. I have no earnings to look at. So let's click on start staking. There's three different places to click on it. So there's three main things you need to keep in mind. Uh, first off, we need to do all the steps we already did. You need to drop in your keystore.json file for each validator you created, and you need to enter that keystore password. Be careful. You need to read these comments and agree to them. Um, I definitely met, recommend looking through how slashing works. And I'm gonna open up where it generated my keystore file. I'm just gonna pick the most recent one I created, drop it in, now remember when we created a password in the command window, you need to enter that here. Not the seed phrase, the actual password you created. And I click upload and it'll give me a green check mark if I did it correctly. More often than not, if you're typing it in wrong, it'll give you a red X. So now I have one validator registered and you can see that it is a pending status because it hasn't launched yet because I made it too recently. I click on that it'll open me up on the beacon chain site to look at it and of course it's not there it needs to take its time again it takes 15 hours for that to come online so i'm just gonna flip over here now this account has two active validators you can see that they have a green check for active if i click on the button at the top right it'll pull up the uh, beacon chain site as well as that validator list and all of their current statistics i can go and look at the validator leaderboard if i want to check some others out um, i can look at these same statistics for all of my validators as well to see how many blocks they found what their average earnings are uh, their effectiveness as a validator their total uptime um, all the recent block proposals and attestations and that is pretty much it for launch it's pretty cool right